Hi friends, it's Deanna here today, and today we're going to be working on the Playtime Kids Capsule. Um, it is super, super cute, and what I love about capsules is that you get um, a few patterns together, and you can mix and match them, and you can create all kinds of mini capsule wardrobes with it. Um, so it is super cute. It's got uh, the pocket Henley the Chapman cardigan, the fly pants, and the Zane hoodie. Um, those four patterns are so cute and I can't wait to set them up for my son. So in this video, we're going to be tackling the Chapman cardigan and the Henley top, and then we'll do a second video where we'll uh, do the fly pants and the uh, Zane hoodie. And I love it. I can't wait to uh, finish them up so my son can have this cute little mini capsule uh, wardrobe, and I hope you sew it up with me. So let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna start with the Chapman cardigan and I've already cut my um, pattern out. Um, it's super cute. I'm using this, um, this is like a um, sweater knit fabric that's got like, you know, the white stripes have like a French cherry loopy part on the back somewhat. So it's gonna be super cozy and I love that it's kind of a neutral color because you can wear it with so much. Um, I wanted to make something uh, for this cardigan. I wanted to choose something that was kind of neutral because I want this capsule, the, the point of the capsule, which is really cool, is to be able to like mix and match and all those things. So I think a, a um, very neutral cardigan, it comes in super, super handy um, at all times just to grab and not have to be like, is this gonna match? Just like when I made, um, I just made this one too. This was another capsule and this is the fairy jacket. I thought the gray the dark gray of the fairy jacket would go with anything so that's why I picked that color so I thought that was really super cute um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this is my back and it's face up on my board I'm gonna grab my front and I'm gonna put it face down on it you want them and we're gonna match up those uh, shoulder seams you want to make sure that your arm size see how it's rounded is on the right side if you see this side right here straight that's the front side so you don't want to you don't want to reverse it um, sometimes if you're kind of sewing in a hurry and you kind of don't even look and you just put it right here then you end up sewing it backwards I've done that before <laughs> So that's why I'm kind of making sure this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew those shoulders together. I'm going to be using my serger. I'm just gonna go do it real quickly because that's just really quickly and I would have probably already done it if I wouldn't have been talking so much. But um, if you don't have a serger, that's all right. You can use any kind of stretch test on your sewing machine and it will just work out just fine. Zigzag stitch, lightning bolt stitch, really you wanna go to your sewing machine and check out what is your favorite kind of stretch stitch by checking out your, using the fabric that you're gonna be using for your project and seeing what kind of stretch you get when you use the different kind of stitches. So let me do that and then we'll move on. My shoulders have been sewn. We're gonna go ahead and move on to our neckband. What I like to do with my neckband is I like to grab it and go ahead with my iron and steam it wrong sides together so it's kind of prepped a little bit. Now this fabric is actually pretty easy when it comes to matching up those raw uh, edges but some fabrics are really kind of stubborn so some fabrics you really it's really uh, imperative that you do this step that way when you're trying to attach it to your uh, to your cardigan it's it goes a little bit smoother it doesn't try to like fold under on you and do all these things that you're like, oh my goodness, fighting with it as you're trying to sew it up. So one thing is I am, I measured my son and I went with a larger size because I want this to be a, a little bit of an oversized uh, cardigan and I want it to fit him for a little while. Um, so I'm really hoping that it will be perfect for what I want it for so okay so now I grabbed my band and now that it's folded wrong sides together I'm gonna fold it right down the middle and mark my middle point that's gonna be my back point I like to do like a little notch just as big as my seam allowance um, I don't want it to be huge I want to eat it when I sew it on but I want to have it there because that way if I'm sewing it and my pin moves or anything I can still see where I'm supposed to be at I'm gonna grab my shoulders and match them together and I'm gonna go to the back of my cardigan and mark it again, same thing. Then I'm gonna open up and where I marked that half, 
I'm gonna go ahead and put my cardigan where I match my half, my cardigan band, sorry. And I'm gonna match that up. Then I'm gonna go down one side of the front and I'm going to match that raw edge. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit shorter so you're gonna have to stretch a little bit. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and pin the bottom first. So it's nice and um, even over here at the bottom. And then I kind of pull it a little bit to stretch out my band so that it's straight and kind of hold it where I want to go next. So that way I can pin it or clip it. And then I do the same thing again, like so. Here is my another piece. And then I go back and do smaller sections. I want to even it out first, the whole section. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead, you could go ahead and quarter your band. I only halved it. So if you wanted to fold it again and quarter it and then um, quarter your cardigan side so you could see where it's at uh, and that would be helpful, you could do that. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. So I'm gonna finish pinning and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side and then we'll go over to my serger and just sew that whole side right up. You're doing a right sides together with the matching those raw edges. My neck band has been sewn and um, we wanna go ahead and steam that seam. I always tell you, steaming the seam is, um, helps with any kind of waviness that you might um, have um, and then what you want to do and I always you always want to steam your seam going the same way so if you're steaming in that way you want it all the whole band to go that way you don't want one going this way and the other way um, and then if you want to you can go ahead and top stitch your band sometimes I don't like top stitching my band especially when I'm using uh, softer fabric like this Mostly because I am, um, sometimes it can cause a little bit of pluckering. Really, I have a cover stitch, so it doesn't cause that much. Um, it usually works out pretty great, but sometimes I just like to go ahead and um, just avoid doing anything else to it because I'm afraid I'm, if I'm gonna cause any kind of bumpiness or anything. But I might change my mind later and just top stitch along that raw edge. All you would do is just go in. Um, if you don't have a cover stitch, or a, you can use a double needle on your sewing machine or you can use a stretch stitch all the way around that little edge right there, tacking that um, seam down. Now we're gonna move on to our sleeves. We're gonna go ahead and open up our arm side and grab our sleeve, okay? We're gonna fold it, our sleeve, fold our sleeve down the middle and I'm gonna mark that top, tippity tip top. And I just did the same thing I did earlier, just grab that notch. Then I'm gonna put it right sides together. I'm gonna match it with that shoulder seam right there. And once I do that, I like to go all the way at the bottom first and match that and then even out the rest. Raw edges together, right sides together, and you kind of even it out and pin. And then I'm gonna go over and do the same on the other side and then just go with my sewing machine or serger and sew that whole raw edge and then we'll do the same thing for the other sleeve as well. Alrighty, my sleeves are on, so we're gonna go ahead and sew up those sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match up those raw edges, right sides together. Um, we're gonna match up right here at the armpit first, match up those seams, and then look at that. Look at how cool that looks right there. Clink, 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 clink. We'll see if it looks that cool on the other side, I don't know. I never know how the stripes are gonna match up. I tried. Um, but I never know. So I'm going down the side. This is my side. And then I'm gonna go down my sleeve and still trying to match up these stripes. See if maybe I can do some kind of uh, magic here because you know, whenever I'm trying, actually I made um, a twisted up top the other day and I had a stripe fabric and somehow I got all the stripes right and I was like, what? So you know, I could pull this off. I don't know. 
I have a little bit of faith on the fact that these stripes are gonna turn out just right. Um, so I'm doing this for the sides and then um, I'm gonna do the other side as well but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also grab my cuffs and I'm gonna fold them right sides together and I'm gonna sew this um, raw edge and I did not cut these bands just right. Look at that. They are not matching. The stripes are not matching. That's okay. And then I'm gonna do the same for the other one. <clears throat> and then, so that way I can sew this and I can sew my sides at the same time. But you know what else I'm gonna do? Because you all know I like to do everything at the same time. I've got my waistband. Here's my waistband. What we're gonna do with the waistband is we're gonna fold right sides together and also sew the raw edges together, just the raw edges. Because then what we're going to do is we're going to flip them over and they're going to be sewn already. So we don't even have to hem or anything. All Everything of this cardigan can be done right on your serger. No need for hemming, which I so anyway, we're gonna sew those, we're gonna sew those, I'm gonna finish the other side, and we're gonna sew those sides as well. Let's go sew. Sides are sewn together, cuffs are sewn together, and band is sewn together. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my sweater around. My stripes did pretty good. Yay, on that side at least, we'll see the other side. Yay! Wow, good job. Eh, close, it looks so good on the other side, but it's not that great right here. Let's see. Well, somewhat, it matched, that one matched. Sleeves are really hard to match though, but you know, overall, really good. I did an a-okay job. All right, so now I've got my uh, sleeve area and you know, look at this cutting job right here. You can see that there's my little tail. I did not cut that very well. I'm just gonna trim it. You know, this fabric is so soft and yummy, but it like moves because it's got these little grooves. So I have to be careful when, I, when I'm cutting it and you know that sometimes I'm not the most careful, but I try. All right, so we're gonna do cuff. So my cuff is already sewn at the side. Now we're just gonna fold it wrong sides together. And first I'm gonna match up that side seam right here. And then, so that's my half. That's, I'm gonna match that to that. And then I'm gonna go and match all the raw edges together. And I'm gonna go from this side to the front and that's gonna be my quarter. That's funny, there's already like a little rip right there of the fabric, like a little bump of the fabric, but I just marked it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my cuff and fit it right into my sleeve, right sides together. And I'm gonna match up those edges. Um, you know what, I don't think I marked the sleeve. So I'm just gonna mark it real quick right here. So mark where that half is so that I can match up that half with this half right here. And then we're gonna do the same for the other cuff. Then when you're sewing, you're just gonna stretch out that cuff to match that um, sleeve. But then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with the, um, with the waistband. That way we can go ahead and do that one too when we're sewing at the same time. I always ask you this, but I wanna know, um, do you sew everything at once like I do or do you do like take it one at a time? So I like to kind of trim this down a little bit. Some people like to do is they pull those threads, the thread, not the loopers but the thread and then uh, when you pull it, it kind of tightens that right there so that it, um, it kind of goes uh, tight so it's not gonna come unraveled or you can tie it or you can, um, sew over it what sometimes I do like with my neckbands I put it right on top of my uh, 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 edge and then zigzag stitch on top of that seam you can do that um, so it doesn't turn out so bulky right here but we're gonna flip it right side out and pull out that corner that's gonna be the corner of my hood of my cardigan sorry I'm gonna turn my iron on so I can steam it flat right there and we're turning the whole thing around we're gonna do the same thing for this other side. <clears throat> Turn it around, poke that corner out a little bit. 
and then we're gonna go ahead and steam it wrong sides together and this is gonna become your band like I said there's not gonna be any hemming because as you see that it's flat now so that's gonna match up with your with your um, band your bodice band bands 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 lots of bands but I like bands do you like bands Ooh. okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the bottom of my cardigan and spread it out like so I'm gonna find my half I always like to find my half and I'm gonna do the same thing for my band now if you want to quarter your band you can quarter it however you want to do it so that um, it's easier for you to find it and then now I'm gonna go ahead and right sides together match that mark right there so it's essentially we're doing the same thing that we did with our neckband we're gonna go to one side again I'm just gonna go all the way to the end and pin that or clip and then I'm gonna kind of pull it make sure it's all even and pin a couple more times I'm gonna do that for the other side as well and then we're gonna go over to our serger and sew our armbands and our uh, waistband together and we'll be done with this uh, pattern and we'll move on to our um, Henley top which I absolutely love Alright, we're basically finished. I'm just gonna go ahead and steam my uh, band that way it doesn't get all wobbly you can see my side seam is a little wobbly so I need to steam that too which I haven't but I will because it really does make a big difference to steam everything up so when you're done just go ahead and steam it now we've got this little piece that's hanging out and like I said before sometimes I just fold it right over that seam allowance and zigzag stitch it right on top sometimes I'll grab one of these thick needles and first I feed it through partly and then I um, go ahead and thread it with my uh, with my uh, serger tail couldn't think of the word whatever that is and then I uh, feed it right through tuck it in all the way you know you can top stitch it whatever you want to do just to hide that tail and it is gone or sometimes you can use it just put it to the side and tuck it tack it right there top stitch it if you want um, but I'll do that same for the other side but our cardigan is done and it, you know what's really annoying that this cardigan is almost as big you know like just just a little bit longer and it will be as big as me this is for my kid like I shouldn't be having to make such big clothing why is it getting so big <laughs> my goodness but it looks super cute it's I think it's gonna be the cutest like grandpa like cardigan I am super excited for it and I can't wait to make our Henley top so let's move on to that all right friends it's time for the Henley pocket top we're gonna start with our bodice uh, this is my front bodice and I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm going to steam it right here at the half because I want to make that crease that memory crease right here I guess you don't have to steam it all the way down just the top area because when I open it I'll have that crease right there did you love this uh, alligator fabric this is um cotton lycra just in case you were wondering um, that's where I'm going to place my uh, interfacing my bodice interfacing right down the middle of where that line is where I make, created that crease because um, that's where our placket's gonna go so I want to make sure that I have some interfacing on there to hold on to you know the sewing I'm gonna do and then you know when I attach things and stuff like that you want to make sure that your fabric is sturdier so there that is and I'm going to also attach interfacing to our uh, placket so here's my placket interfacing and I'm gonna put it if you look at your um, you have the diagram on the little piece that you cut out it shows you where this exactly is gonna go so you can mark it um, but it's also it's a half an inch from the edges from both edges 
So um, I am bad, I kind of just eyeball it, but um, if you want to go ahead and measure half an inch on each side and that's where it's gonna go, so let's do that. And you apply that interfacing uh, per, as per your interfacing, like, um, I was gonna say manual, but it's not really a manual, it's like whatever it tells you to do, that's how you apply it. Uh, I'm just doing steam. My iron was not hot, so it like spilled on me. So let, let it get hot. <laughs> so now with the placket, and I'm gonna do this for both, I'm gonna fold in those two edges, the two half inch edges. All right, so those two half inch, ooh, it's hot. It get, this iron gets so hot. Two half an inch edges, and then I'm gonna go ahead and fold it in half. I'm just gonna put some pins in here to put it aside and have that placket um, ready. I'm gonna do the same for the other one, but then um, we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and sew a straight stitch rectangle all the way around this uh, interfacing. So I'm going down, over, and back up. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now that that is sewn all the way around, we're gonna go ahead and grab um, right here, right down the middle. If you wanna mark your middle again, you can go ahead and mark it with, you know, like a pen or something, so you know where you're clipping or whatever. We're gonna go ahead and cut right down that middle. Let me make sure, I'm gonna steam it again. I just wanna make sure I'm cutting right down the middle. And you're gonna measure, I forgot to tell you this. Whew. You're gonna measure a uh, half an inch from the bottom. Half an inch from the bottom. And I'm using this water soluble pen to mark it. And I'm going to um, clip, um, cut all the way to that mark. Stop at that mark. And then I'm gonna go to the sides. And I'm gonna go to one diagonally to that corner, but don't clip the thread. So stop right before it ends, and then to the other side. You gotta be really careful, because these are so sharp. Any sudden movement, and you'll just go, and you'll eat everything. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our placket. We're gonna, this is how it's looking, okay? We're gonna turn our bodice, and you can start with whatever placket you wanna start. I'm just gonna start with this one. You're gonna line it up at the top, you know, for this part, it really is easier to use pins because we're going to be sewing this together. Um, so pins are a little bit easier sometimes when you are sewing something. And then we're going to go over to our sewing machine. So we're putting it right sides together, the placket with the one side. We're gonna do the same for the other side. So I'm just showing you this side right now. And then we're going to go over to our sewing machine and we're going to sew down that same line straight down to that edge, like where we've finished. We're not gonna turn, we're just gonna go down. Now make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and at the end, and that's how we're gonna sew that on. So I'm gonna go over to my sew machine, sew down, stop at that edge, backstitch a little bit, and then that's what you're doing right now. Alrighty, it is sewn. I'm gonna clip some of these threads. Again, I backstitched so you, um, can be safe that they are not gonna come unraveled. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna open it up and here is my side where I uh, made that, uh, I sewed that uh, placket. We're gonna fold those in towards the uh, placket and steam. Then I'm gonna grab my placket, whoops, I just knocked my scissors down. But this side folded down and we're gonna grab that placket and come over, okay? But the first thing you wanna do though, before I forget, is you wanna mark where that stitch ends. This is where I go, this is where I end right here. And I, I wanna be careful that it's not going through because this water soluble pen, um, I, I'm not, I haven't tested it on this fabric and sometimes they're not the best. So I'm like, oh gosh. 
um, I don't want to mark my, my fabric with purple pen. But now I see it where it is at, so I keep that in mind because when I go to top stitch, that's where I'm going to stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin my placket. I'm gonna put that last pin right at that mark so I know to stop right before that pin. And I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna top stitch that raw, that, not that raw edge, that folded edge right here. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch that down so that um, I'm attaching my placket. And I'm gonna stop right before that pin, right at the edge, okay? So I'm gonna go all the way down, top stitching, and stop right at that line. Alrighty, so there's my placket. And this is what it looks like back here. There's a piece that is unsewn, it's just hanging there. There's a triangle piece. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the other placket. Um, the exact same thing we just did, we're gonna go ahead and uh, pin it from the top, raw edges, right sides together, and then sew over that top line, right here, sew over that line, stop right there, then turn it around, flip it, steam it, and top stitch it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back to uh, move on to the next step. All right, now both of my plackets are on. Now we're gonna go ahead and bring down that one side that we can bring down that right side or left side. And I've got that little triangle hanging out right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that triangle. And while I'm grabbing that triangle, I'm gonna bring this other one right on top. So now they're right on top of each other. The two plackets are on top of each other and the triangle is right behind them. So let's put them right on top of each other, like so. And here's the triangle. Now, I when I folded my placket, I didn't quite fold it right, so I've got a little bit of extra, so that's why you see a little bit of extra. But yours, it's probably going to line up straight. Now, if yours is just like mine and it's not lining up straight, make sure that you line it up so that your uh, uh, triangle is right where it's supposed to be, right in between the two plackets and you have not pockering on the sides. What you can do is, what we're gonna do now is gonna sew that down, tack that down right there, but what you can do is you can go ahead and, and clip it or pin it so like it's already quote unquote sewn and then turn it and make sure that your placket is going to look correctly. So do you see that what I did? I'm not fully over to the side yet, so I need to bring it together a little bit more, see how far it is. Just make sure that triangle's still out, and we're bringing it over, put it on top of each other, and pin it. Pin it at the top as well, and then turn it. So really, you just wanna go ahead and play with it and look at it and see when it's gonna, how it's gonna turn out when you turn it to the other side. See that? Now it looks a whole lot better, like it matches. We're gonna top stitch. Eventually we're gonna top stitch right here so that will be tacked down. But you wanna make sure that it all aligns. I know it's kind of bumpy right here but that's because my clips are right there. But um, so that that's how it's gonna go. So you wanna make sure that your plackets are even back here in the back and that there's no pluckers on the fabric in the back when you're gonna sew. Um, so now, I'm just gonna hold my fabric just like this. I'm gonna go ahead and, I don't know why I removed those pins because they need to be there. I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew right on top. See where that line is, where I already sewed? I'm just gonna sew back and forth right there to tack that down first. And then I'll go over to my serger after I tack that down and I'm just gonna serge this bottom so finish that raw edge. If you don't have a serger, you can just do a zigzag stitch and finish that raw edge and then trim the excess. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, now that my back has been sewn together and it's all put together, we're gonna make a little square right here on the bodice. And all I'm doing is I'm just going right along that edge and my needle down and going up, over, and uh, no, down, over, up, over. Woo! 
All right, so my placket is done and I could have done a better job at my uh, square, but it's okay. I could do like a little X on it or something like that later. You can go ahead and move on to do your buttons or your snaps. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do snaps. So I'll do those at the end, um, but you'll do your buttonholes and your buttons. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to doing, put in assembling our top together. We're gonna put right sides together, put our sleeves, uh, shoulders on. And I'm going to go over and sew these together. All right, our shoulders are done. So we're going to go ahead and attach our sleeves. Was that placket as hard as you thought it was going to be? I feel like plackets are so much easier than you think. You get all nervous. I'm folding my sleeve in half and finding that top uh, and marking it. You get all nervous and you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so hard. And then you actually do it and you're like, wait a minute. That was not that hard. I can do that. Um, so I hope that you thought you felt that way. Let me know in the comments what you think. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up that sleeve and where I marked that half, I'm gonna put that right at my shoulder seam and pin and go all the way down to one side, just like we did with our Chapman cardigan um, over here and then even out those raw edges and then do the same for the other sleeve and then go over and sew it on. Our sleeves are on. We're gonna go ahead and sew our sides together. So I'm gonna put my um, right sides together and I'm gonna match right here at the seam, armpit seam. Go down the sleeve and then go down the bodice and then sew it together. And I'm gonna do the same for both sides. Time for our neckband. We're gonna grab it and we're gonna fold it right side, wrong sides together, I'm sorry. And steam. Then we're going to, I'm gonna find my half. So I'm gonna fold it. And here's my half. And I'm gonna do the same for my bodice, meet my shoulders, find my back. And now right sides together, we're gonna match up those raw edges. So there's my half. And then all the way down. So what I can do is I can go ahead and bring that point to that edge because that point is what is gonna be at the end of that placket. And then make sure I even it all out, just like I did my cardigan neckband and everything else. And then I'm gonna even that out, even out all the way around. And then I'll go ahead and sew. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Go all the way, that point is gonna end up right at the edge where that Placket it is, okay, and then even out the whole rest of the way, and then I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and sew it on. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to put a pin out on it, like right here at the edge, to keep it from, sometimes it wants to move back when you're going to sew it at the end, and you don't want it to come off the edge and be, you have like a little gap there. So I'll put like a pin or something, so when I'm sewing, a pin, the pin will stay there. Um, that way it won't move. I'm gonna do the same for the other side, and then we're gonna go sew. All right, so we finished those corners and we still have a thread right here. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the Chapman cardigan where we're gonna grab our thick needle. We're gonna steam or seam down. So I like to steam or seam down first. So this goes down towards the bodice and then we're gonna flip it in, that thread, and stitch it right and get it right through that seam allowance right here. So then we'll do that and we'll be done with the neckband. And I gotta still do my buttons and then we're gonna hem with a half an inch Allowance. So I'm gonna fold half an inch in, and we're gonna steam and hem, and that's it. We're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish all these little last thing, last details that I need to finish up. 
and then I'll take a couple pictures of my son wearing his new top. I know, I was like, I wanna show it to you um, so you can see just how cute it turns out. So I'm gonna just clip it down so you can see it right now because I don't know where I put my needle. I gotta go find it. But it's looking super cute and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, go ahead and come find the tutorial on the next uh, episode tutorial where I work on the fly pants and the Zane hoodie. I think it's gonna be super cute. So go find that next and continue to build your outfit, your little capsule with me. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Comment, like, share, subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, oh, remember to comment and subscribe so you can be entered for the $50 Alien Maggie certificate giveaway that happens monthly. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time. Bye.